a guy off from Waco, Texas, and we got chatting about you know why he moved to to Nashville. He was a student at Belmont University, which is a one of the best music universities in the country, and it's right here in Music City, as you would think. But Waco, Texas has an interesting story behind it. So today, let's take a look at what happened there all those years ago. Waco is a city in McLennan County, Texas. Situated about halfway between Dallas and Austin, the city has a population now of around 150,000 people and gets its name from the Wichita Indian tribe known as the Waco, or in Spanish, Waco. The city first gained notoriety in 1916 when a black teenager named Jesse Washington was tortured, mutilated and burned to death in the town square by a mob that seized him from the courthouse where he had confessed to and been convicted of murdering a local white woman. The death of Washington was witnessed by 15,000 spectators and was to become known as the Waco Horror. In 1937, a soft drink called Sun Tang Red Cream Soda was invented in Waco, a drink that would later become known as Big Red. But it was in 1993 that the city would become known globally after what was termed the Waco Siege. A 51-day standoff between Branch Davidians and federal agents resulted in the deaths of nearly 80 people. The Branch Davidians were founded by Ben Roden in 1959 as an offshoot of the Davidian Seventh-day Adventist Church. They settled 10 miles outside of Waco, Texas at a camp called Mount Carmel. The Branch Davidians lived a simple life with a mission of preparing for the imminent return of Jesus. However, in the mid-1980s, the group became embroiled in a power struggle and by the end of the decade, Vernon Howe, who would later be known as David Koresh, had become head of the Mount Carmel community. He soon began taking spiritual wives, several of whom were reportedly as young as 11 years of age. Allegations of child abuse and Koresh's launch of a retail gun business attracted the attention of local authorities. Believing that the group was illegally stockpiling weapons, the US Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms, also known as the ATF, obtained both an arrest warrant for Koresh and a search warrant for the compound. On February 28, 1993, more than 70 ATF agents raided the complex. Gunflyer erupted, though it is uncertain to this day who fired first, and during the two-hour battle, four federal agents were killed and more than a dozen injured. In addition, six Davidians reportedly died. Nearly 900 law enforcement officials subsequently descended on the compound, including FBI hostage negotiators. During phone calls, Koresh engaged in what was termed Bible babble and threatened violence, though he stated that neither he nor his followers were suicidal, partly in exchange for various supplies, which included milk that was delivered in cartons with listening devices, Koresh allowed more than 30 followers to leave. It was thought that some 100 remained in the compound. As talk stalled, at one point Koresh said that he would surrender if one of his sermons was broadcast on national radio, but then failed to do so when it aired. Agents tried various strategies, including turning off the compound's electricity, playing Tibetan chants over loudspeakers, and shining spotlights on the complex to disrupt sleep. Convinced that Koresh would not surrender, US Attorney General Janet Reno gave permission for the FBI to raid the compound. At approximately 6 a.m. on April the 19th, 1993, the FBI began spraying tear gas into the complex. Soon thereafter, the Branch Davidians began firing their weapons. For more than five hours, armored vehicles, some of which punched holes into walls, deposited 400 tear gas canisters inside the compound. At 11.40 a.m. the assault ended. Some 25 minutes later, the Branch Davidians set several fires and at 12.25 p.m. gunfire was heard inside the compound. Due to safety concerns, firefighters were not allowed into the area for another 15 minutes, by which time the compound was beyond saving. Whilst nine people managed to escape, the rest died. Investigators ultimately found 75 bodies, 25 of which belonged to children. A number of deceased had been fatally shot, including Koresh. While some of the wounds appeared to be self-inflicted, others did not. The government's handling of the situation drew sharp criticism and Reno was later to express regret for authorizing the raid. While the government long maintained that it was not involved in starting or spreading the fire, in 1999 it was revealed that some of the tear gas used by the FBI was in fact flammable. Later that year, Reno appointed John Danforth, a lawyer and former Republican senator, to investigate the raid. His probe, which concluded in the year 2000, found that the US government did not cause the fire, nor did it shoot at the compound. Regardless of such findings, some people viewed the Waco siege as governmental abuse of authority 
and it spurred the growth of militias, which would lead two years later to the Oklahoma City truck bombing.